Hello everyone, my name is Adam or Epos Vox, and welcome to a quick tutorial on setting up and streaming with OBS in less than 10 minutes. OBS is a live streaming and recording software that's completely free, but still in beta. I'm assuming you at least know a little bit about OBS and live streaming, or else you wouldn't really be here. I would like to note, however, that OBS, like any streaming or recording software worth using, has many complex and finicky parts to it. This video will cover the basics of getting your stream up and running, with links to expansion videos on various areas provided to help you dig deeper into each section of the software. Should you run into any problems, I suggest watching through the expansion videos as well as other OBS tutorials and over, head over to the support forums at OBS Project's webpage with any specific issues or troubleshooting. Everyone's setup is different. I nor other YouTubers are not guaranteed to have the right answer for you, but those forums are your best place to get help. Now let's get started. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It is a great software to live stream your games, desktop, or whatever else. It's a handy video recording software if you don't have Fraps or DX Story, and frankly it's going to be a bit less laggy for you. Now in order to get it, you just need to head over to obsproject.com and download your copy, and install it. I'd like to note that there are 32-bit and 64-bit versions. If you have a 64-bit computer, it will automatically install the 64-bit version. However, most plugins only support the 32-bit version, so I suggest kind of sticking with that. First things first, we need a recording or streaming profile. Here on my list, you can see I have a list of profiles available. You will not have any. You will just have untitled. However, we're going to set one up. So go to Settings, Settings and it's going to take you right to the profile option. We're going to create a new profile. I'm going to call this Herp Derp. You call it whatever it's appropriate for you. Twitch, YouTube, recording, whatever. And then click Add. And that's going to create your new profile that we're going to work with moving forward. Profiles can also be very useful for a variety of other reasons, which I cannot cover in this video. Setting up multiple profiles can highly benefit you, and I suggest you watching my expansion video for more details. Let's head over to the broadcast settings menu. We're going to skip encoding for a little while. Now you have two, well, yeah, two scenarios in which you would really be using this. You would either be live streaming to twitch.tv, YouTube, or other websites, or you would be locally recording for just editing and uploading to YouTube. Based on which option you want, you would choose a certain, the certain choice. So if you're live streaming, you would choose under mode, you would choose live stream. For your streaming service, you would pick which streaming service you want it to go to. For example, twitch.tv, your server, you would choose the server that is closest to you, and then you would get your stream key from your twitch.tv dashboard. Do not let anybody stream your key or see your key, as if they, if they can see your key, they can stream to your stream, and you do not want that. If you are streaming to YouTube, simply select YouTube, and then the path key or stream key is something that it gives you in the ingestion settings when you're setting up your stream event on YouTube. Do note, if you're streaming to YouTube, you need to click the Advanced tab, apply your settings, click the Advanced tab, and set your keyframe interval to 2 seconds. It's just the thing you need for YouTube. Now, if you want to save a local copy of your stream's video just to re-upload or edit or something, check the Save to File box and give it a location. Also, make sure Auto Reconnect is selected. Click on that encoding menu. Make sure your settings are applied. Now make sure the X264 encoder is checked, use CBR is checked, use enable CBR padding is checked. Now we pick our bitrate. If you're live streaming, you choose your max bitrate based on your upload speed. Use a combination of both speedtest.net for getting your upload speed and a variety of bitrate calculators to determine the speed you need to upload with. Low, slower the internet you have, the lower the bitrate you need to use. As far as audio goes, as far as I'm concerned, if you have really slow internet, do 128 kilobytes per second right here. If you have decent internet, do 192 for streaming. And if you're recording, choose 320 kilobytes per second. If you are recording, you're going to want a much higher bitrate depending on your computer. The higher the bitrate, the more lag you're going to experience. So if you do not have a high end PC, you're going to want a lower bitrate. There are also disk speed test programs you can use to determine your disk write speed and choose a bitrate based on that. I use 26.5 megabytes per second for writing, but I have a very high end PC and separate rated hard drives specifically for recording. Again, post in the forums if you need help. Click the video menu. Video adapter. This is your graphics card, the thing that handles your main screen and all of your games. 
Ideally, you only have one or two, and it should be pretty obvious which one you choose. If not, you have to figure it out. Check support forums. Laptops get a bit wonky in that regard. Assuming you have a 16 by 9 monitor, either 1080p, 1366 by 766 or 720p, choose monitor 1 here. And then on resolution downscale, choose 1.5 and 1280 by 720. Click apply. If you do not have a 16x9 monitor and you have a square 4x3 or a 16x10 monitor, you're just going to have to deal with the black bars. You can stretch it out, but it's not going to look very good. Honestly, dealing with the black bars is your best option. Click the audio menu. Desktop audio device. For most people, default, sh default should be just fine. This is going to be where your game and main system audio comes out from. This will be your speakers, headphones, laptop monitor, computer monitor, optical audio out, etc. If you have something specific, you can, of course, just click it and find your specific choice, but ideally, by default, that should work for you. Microphone auxiliary device should be self-explanatory. It's your microphone. If you're not sure what to pick, you can certainly post in the forums, but generally, it should be self-explanatory. You should only have one or two choices. Now, if you're having issues where your mic is just way too quiet, you can play around with the mic aux boost here, and it does multiply, so you're going to want to your two should be the highest you go. You don't want to jump it up to five or you're going to be blowing someone's ears out. But play around with that as you wish. Once you have that all that set up, click apply and click OK. Now you're back in the main window with nothing to do. So first of all, we're going to turn down the speaker icon here down to at least 50%. You're going to want to play around. This is your desktop audio levels, your game audio. If you have it up too loud, it's going to overpower your mic. You don't want that. So play around with it. See what sounds good for you. Do some test streams, things like that. Now under scenes here, we're going to right click, we're going to add a scene. This is going to be your scene that people view of your video. So call it whatever you want, test. And then you got to add sources to it. Sources are, you know, what people want to see, your game, your webcam, your capture cards, etc. Again, expansion videos will help you with this. Right click under sources, click add, and here you have a variety of options you can choose from. If you just want to capture your whole monitor for recording flash games, browser games, just your desktop, you can choose monitor capture, and then you have a couple options as there. Default should work fine. If you want to choose game capture for recording a game, you'd right click and go to add and choose game capture, and then you would pick your game. Your game needs to be open or it will not find it, so go ahead and open your game, then refresh this and find your game. Do note that until you go back into your game, start the preview of the stream, go back into your game, and then alt tab back into the streaming program, you will have a black screen. If you still have a black screen after doing all this, you may have some DirectX issues or graphics drivers issues. Again, post in the support forum. This would also be where you would add stream graphics such as overlays, banners, things like that by using an image or an image slideshow. If you wish to add your webcam, capture card, things like that, you would use video capture device. And that's where you can choose a variety of capture devices hooked up to your computer, my Elgato, my webcam, things like that. Anything that would not work in XSplit is not going to work here, so as far as I know, Hapages will not work. You have a few more buttons here at the bottom preview stream is of course going to preview your stream edit scenes going to allow you to resize your specific windows so you can choose to overlay your webcam over in the corner resize it move it around things like that you can also right click to adjust position and size reset it back to the size of the screen move it up and down in your lord order list of sources things like that once you're just happy with it uncheck edit scene hit stop preview and then you can start streaming or recording based on your settings that you chose in the settings and you're good to go. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the support forums. Check out my expansion videos for expanded thoughts on each different settings section. I hope this video helped you out as fast to the point. That's what I'm going for. Thank you for watching, and otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Epos and Chew. Let's play together. If you enjoyed the video, consider clicking on the screen to contribute to our Patreon campaign. To watch another video, click on one of the video annotations on the screen above. Links are also provided to our website, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. See you next time.